Hi, this is Mike Crow, and I run a home inspection business. In fact, I've run a couple of home inspection businesses. The true joy for me, though, has been helping literally thousands of home inspectors build really solid home inspection businesses as well. We can help a single man operation be able to do over $300,000 a year, maybe all the way up to $400,000 a year as a single inspector operation. Even better for me is the 80 plus companies that we have helped be able to build million dollar home inspection businesses. I would like to help you be able to do the same thing. Mike recently gave his presentation on the report blueprint. We'll be working our way through that presentation over the next series of episodes, so be sure to tune in for each episode. So we're getting ready to go into a couple things. Now, this presentation today is all Krista's fault, okay? Uh, Krista is my oldest, uh, and uh, one day I was talking and simply going through a lot of things, and uh, she said, hey, we should talk about report writing, because in report writing, every inspector wants to hear it. And I went, we teach marketing. We teach marketing, not report writing. And she went, um, so remember that guy, Walt Disney? I went, yes. What was one of the things that was most important about their theme parks, Disneyland or Disney World? What was one of the most important things about their parks? Keeping the parks clean, okay? Because everybody said, hey, Walt, well, you don't want to open a park because all those parks are dirty and trashy and everything. And he goes, no, not mine, okay? So one of the things was at one point, Krista said to me, she said, uh, report writing. Is report writing marketing? And I went, yeah, because the way you write your report really helps differentiate you between you and all of your competition. And the words you say or don't say can make the difference between whether you get a referral again or whether you lose the business uh, and never hear from people again. Uh, and so sometimes people don't understand that one simple fact. And so just like Walt thought that the keeping the parks clean was important, I think your report your report of your home inspection is what is just like that sort of thing. It's marketing. What, what makes you different than everybody else? And our report is one of those big things. So we're going to go into this. Uh, and I, I will tell you, I, I said, people don't even really want to hear this. I'll send out a simple email. And if we get some responses, then what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll do it. Okay. And I sent out uh, one simple question. What's your number one question about report writing? I got 300 responses within 24 hours, 300 responses. And she went, see? And I went, nope, Krista's right again, okay? Uh, and so it was one of those things. And I started looking at the questions, and I knew the answers to all of them. I mean, it was so simple to me because, well, my company, by the way, has done over 100,000 inspections. Think about that for a second. And, and one of the reasons report writing became so important uh, is because what we figured out was that we do over 400 inspections a month on average. So we'll do 5,000, 6,000 inspections this year, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, and what that means is we're going to do 400 inspections in any given month, and some months more than that, uh, because uh, it's busier during the summertime. And of course, during the wintertime for us, it's not. So what that means is for the average inspector, OK, so like some of you that I see, you will probably do, if you're a busy inspector and you're a single man operation, you'll probably do 400 inspections this year. That's great. I did that in a month. So what that means is I took what I learned and I applied it across the field. But whereas you may only see something once or twice a year, I might see it once or twice a month. And one of the things I wanted to do, and I teach people systems, people, and resources. One of the things I wanted to do was systematize my reporting process to keep it as clean as possible and as smooth as possible so that you didn't have to go through some of the, the things. Also, from time to time, we get what I would call just foolish phone calls. Sometimes I want to call them stupid phone calls. And you probably had one of those. And so if you do 400 inspections a year, you might get five or six of those the whole year. But when you do 6,000 inspections a year, you get four or five or six or 10 of those a month. You start asking yourself, how do I make these phone calls stop? How do I make them go away? How do I make it so that nobody, me, how do I make it so I never have to hear that question again? 
And so one of the things I want to try to do is go through with you some of the questions we got asked and what I consider some of the most important ways to make the whole inspection process go smooth, not just before the inspection process, not just during the inspection process, but after the inspection process. See, the average inspector after the inspection is done thinks it's good news if he never hears from that client again, okay? I think almost exactly the opposite. I'm begging for that client to put a good word for me out on reviews or help me make sure I understand that I did a good job uh, in the process as well. And I want that client, I want that client to go running back to their real estate agent and go, oh my God, thank you for recommending these people. They were great. They were perfect. Whereas the whole average home inspector goes, no, no, that's my client. I'm good. I'm done. If, if they don't come back and ask me questions, then I did a good job. Exactly the opposite of the way they should be thinking. So we're going to go through some things. Uh, one of the things that I love to tell people about is that this is a family-owned business. I am not a franchise. I don't franchise. I thought about franchising, and then I decided, no, I, I just want to help people. So I am, I am the unfranchise model. I am the guy that's here to help answer your questions, help you succeed without you having to pay 10% of your business or more out to some franchise every single month. And here's one of the things. Look, I know some of you are probably in a franchise, and if you are, forgive me. I'm not trying to be mean, but here's the real truth. After about three years, you ask yourself, you look in the mirror one day, and you go, why am I doing this? Okay? And it's okay. They probably taught you a lot, probably helped you get there. But I'm the unfranchise model. I'm the guy that's going to help you get the answers without you having to give away 10% of your business to somebody. Trust me, when you're a million-dollar business, you do not want to be paying somebody $100,000 a year, okay, to teach you what I'm getting ready to share with you, okay? So part of it is, is that we're a family-owned business. Krista is my oldest. Uh, she is amazing. She's been with me from the very beginning uh, until recently. She's never even had a job outside of the company. And the only reason she had a job outside the company was because we sold one of our companies. And she worked for that company for a period of time, helping them try to keep things on track and show them uh, and explain to them why we did what we did. Jonathan is my oldest son. Uh, he was a licensed home inspector by the age of 18. Okay. Now, uh, 18 is the earliest you can be a home inspector in Texas because we have licensing and different things. The truth was, he's been out on inspections with me since he was so high. And, and if you ask him the question, it gets, by the way, it gets younger every year. But if you ask him the question, you know, when, when did your dad start teaching? You say, I remember being on a roof when I was... I don't know what his answer is nowadays, but used to be four, used to be six, then it was four, then it was three, and, you know, it's probably two now. And it's probably, well, Mama carried me in my arms, and her arms, would, no, Mama never did that, I guarantee you, okay? But the bottom line is, Jonathan's been there, and Jonathan has done literally over thousands of inspections as well, okay? Uh, and then I'm going to talk, probably mention to you a little bit about Elizabeth. Elizabeth is my youngest. But she becomes important because here's what I want you to understand. Elizabeth was a teenager when she came to work with me in my business. And you're going to hear me talk a little bit about her. By the way, she's an amazing young lady uh, and doing amazing, great things out there as well. Uh, and then the lady that is responsible for all of this is my wife, okay? Uh, it's her fault that I'm here, all right? I was sitting home one day after I'd retired for selling my first company. By the way, I sold my first home inspection company for over a million dollars, first time it ever happened in the industry. Nobody thought anybody would sell an inspection company for over a million dollars. Now it's been done several times. Uh, and uh, I was having a good time. I was relaxing, uh, I would exercise, I would go uh, do stuff, and uh, m my wife came home one day, who by the way still had a job. Okay, came home one day and saw me sitting there and went, you cannot sit on the couch all day long and watch Hogan's Heroes. By the way, I don't know, how many of you like Hogan's Heroes? I, I love Hogan's Heroes, okay? Probably would not float in today's political world, but it was a great show and I enjoyed it immensely. And I, and I looked at her and I, I was sitting on the couch, I can still remember looking up at her and went, absolutely, dear, I totally understand. I just want you to know, I've also watched Gomer Powell and Petticoat Junction and, and, and Beverly Hillbillies and Green Acres, and she gave me that look. For you guys that are married, you know what that look looks like. And I said, well, what do you think we should do? 
And she said, well, let's get Krista and Jonathan together and, and, and talk about what we could do. So I got Krista and Jonathan together, um, and uh, Susan was there, and we took a, a big white pad, and we took a big white pad, and we said, all right, what can we do? And we started dividing it down. One was I thought, okay, I could become a real estate agent. Man, I, I've helped more real estate agents succeed than the average guy. And I thought, well, we could do that. Uh, and so that me and Krista, we went and got our real estate license, okay? And then I thought, well, I could be a mortgage broker or a loan originator, I think they call them. And so I thought I could do that. And so um, we started taking a look at that. And there were about 10 things on the list. But about the fourth or fifth one, what Susan was, was, well, could you help people to do what you did? And I went, uh, and, and what is that? She said, build a million dollar business. Could you help people succeed in business the way you succeeded? And I went, well, I think I could. I think I can. And she knew that I'd been studying coaching for years up to that point. I used to go to one coach in particular. I went every month, no matter where he was in the country. I went and visited him, took notes. I had a notebook of day one, day two, and day three of his notes, so I knew exactly what he was teaching people. And it was exactly what I was using in my business to help it grow. And so I knew I could take that information and help pass it on to people. That actually became a uh, a, a big chunk of that became what we teach in Big Bang Marketing. So it's important to understand that you can see a lot of pieces coming together, and sometimes you don't always understand why. By the way, my wife, Susan, my amazing Susan, said, you will never get me on stage, don't even try, right? We got her to, on stage, and it got to a point where she got excited about helping people, and boy, there she is, okay? Uh, and she, she started realizing we were changing lives and changing marriages. Now, I'm going to tell you a secret. Yes, I'm going to teach you how to build a really good, solid home inspection business, but I'm also going to teach you how to make sure you stay married during the process. Because most people understand that really what I'm doing here, mostly because of Susan, is that this is as much a marriage enrichment course as it is a business course, all right? Because what happened was, me and Susan, I'm gonna warn you, I'm an emotional person, so I may get emotional on you, and if I do, that's okay. Um, real people do get emotional, just so you know, all right? Um, but at one point, me and Susan had been married, and I could feel that something was missing, something wasn't right, and, and um, uh, my church was having a marriage enrichment seminar, and I told Susan I want to go, and she said no, and I said, I think we should go, and she said no, and, and I finally got to a point, and she said, we have a good marriage, and, and I don't think we need to be going to this. Only people that go to this kind of stuff, 12-week course, are people that have problems, okay? And... Um, I took her by the hands, and I looked her in the eye, and I said, I don't want a good marriage. I want a great marriage. And she agreed to go to the course. And it was life-changing for us, and it's one of the reasons that Susan and I are working on 46 plus years, okay? Because I didn't want a good marriage. I wanted a great marriage. I don't want you to have a good business. I want you to have a great business. One of the biggest things that happens to people, and I'm going to be talking about this at other times and other places, um, I call it the 4% uh, challenge, but one of the biggest challenges that people have is they get complacent because they get enough success, they get comfortable, they don't want to continue growing. I'm just one of those crazy people that cannot just sit on the couch and watch Huggins Heroes because my wife won't let me, okay? <laughs> so, uh, so it's important to see that. So there's Susan, and she is on, uh, she's on stage and... Uh, uh, and by the way, she has now done full-length presentations because one of the things she started figuring out was she wrote a presentation called The Raising and Feeding of Your Entrepreneurial Spouse, Who You Love, most of the time. And what that did was it helped a lot of people in our audience and in our coaching program, our community, our family, understand that Business is only part of the process. In fact, one of the things we discovered as we were going through the marriage enrichment course, uh, not only did we go through it, but my wife decided, amazingly enough, we should facilitate it. So we facilitated six, eight of those classes. Uh, I mean, it was just, and, and, and you think as a guy, I'm going to tell you as a guy, you think once you've been through the course, good, check that off, I'm all done, right? And you think, well, next time they ask you, so how are you doing in your marriage? And you're rating it an eight, and she's still rating it, well, let's see, she rated it a four last time. Now she's rating it a three. What the hell, <laughs> okay? And so one of the things we had to do was realize we had to change some things and make things a little bit different, a little bit better. 
And one of the things we realized was that 80 plus percent of entrepreneurs that have marriages that fail have a financial problem in their world. And that's where Susan said, can we help people fix that? And I said, yeah, I think we can. And we have. We helped over 100 plus companies now build million dollar companies. Okay. So then there is my youngest son. He was one of our marketing people and did a great job with all that. Uh, and uh, you will hear from him and see some things. Uh, I'm so proud of him uh, for a lot of the stuff that he did. Uh, he actually is uh, now working for a digital graphics company, uh, actually flight safety. He actually makes some of the products that uh, pilots use to uh, be able to take things. And then, then there is my dad. And my dad is one of the most incredible people ever. Uh, he was a hell of a father in more ways than one, okay? Uh, and things were tough sometimes. I will tell you that one of the things I find sometimes is that parents are too easy on their kids, okay? My dad did not fall into that category, okay? Uh, and I did not fall into that category when it came to my kids. One of the things my kids laugh about on family night every Thursday night is about some of the really difficult decisions I help them make. Okay. By the way, uh, Texas, me and my dad were doing inspections before licensing, and Texas was the first state that had licensing. And my dad's license number is 28. Two digits, 28, right? And so I learned a lot from him. Uh, fortunately, my dad is still around. I go see him every Friday. We have a great time. We play dominoes, and the, uh, the loser buys lunch for the, the winner, okay? Uh, and uh, uh, we go back and forth on that one. So it's kind of interesting. All right, so let's talk about some ABCs of reporting.